I'm Neva Liv, and welcome to Living with AI. Today, I want to talk about art-focused generative AI that I find completely mind-blowing. AI tools where you just enter text to create art have captured the world's attention over the past few months after demonstrating some phenomenal capabilities. Like this piece made in mid-journey that won an actual art competition. In each of these tools, you just type in whatever comes to mind and you get some really impressive results. So I want to put the three big AI art tools to the test in a very unscientific experiment. I tried the same prompts in Dolly, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion to compare them. First, we'll begin with Midjourney, which works through Discord. When you first start in it, you're directed to use these newbies channels, and you can see once we type in the prompt, it's hard to find your request, since there's a lot of other people in a channel. You can eventually move away from using shared channels, but they are both a blessing and a curse. Because while it's difficult to find your artwork, you can also see what other people are creating and get ideas for future prompts and understand what keywords they're using. The first prompt will be cyberpunk girl riding on a cyborg dragon over a futuristic city. And we're gonna use the keywords realistic and high detail. Once the art has loaded, we can see that Midjourney followed the prompt, made it very detailed and clean, and did everything we asked for. Next, we'll try the same prompt with stable diffusion, which we can access through an interface called Dream Studio. You can see from a first glance that it is much less complicated than Midjourney slash Discord, which is a huge plus. We also have some adjustments available on the side panel. But when we get the results, they are slightly disturbing. First of all, it's not as clean and much more jumbled than Midjourney. It's trying, but it's a mess. And as for this photo, it should probably be censored. Moving to Dolly, using the same prompt, you can see that Dolly's interface is also simple and easier to use. When it loads, we see the thumbnails look really good, and it seems they followed the prompt well. But when we click in, it's kind of a hot mess. Next prompt, we'll start with Midjourney again. The prompt's gonna be illustration for a kid's movie poster about a five-year-old and her unicorn with a rainbow waterfall background, Pixar 3D, colorful, bright, happy. The results are pretty amazing. In Dream Studio, we had a little trouble with the interface, so we had to remove a few parts of the prompt to make it work. The prompt that we used was illustration of a five-year-old and a unicorn with a rainbow waterfall background, 3D colorful, bright, happy. The results are ugh. But the biggest thing we found is that it included watermarks, which means it used artwork that did not want to be copied. This is unacceptable. And take a look at this girl's face. I'd be a bit freaked out about seeing this in a kid's book. Same with another picture. It's a bit like a horror movie. The other two pieces don't even have girls in them. Were they eaten by the other two? Over to Dolly. Same prompt, no issues using the words. First glance at the thumbnails, pretty good. Then we click in. And I think we have the origin story for the Squid Game doll. I don't even know what's happening with this last unicorn, but it is completely terrifying. Final round, final prompt. Just a warning, this prompt does involve zombies and it may be a bit grotesque. Although, I don't think it's nearly as disturbing as those unicorns. <coughs> this time we'll go in reverse order, starting with Dolly. The prompt is two zombies eating a romantic dinner at a dimly lit Italian restaurant. HD, finely detailed and cinematic. Even seeing the thumbnails, the artwork looks a bit too abstract for my taste. Looking into each piece, it's really blurry. They did capture some of the essence of the prompt we were after, except for the zombie part. It's just creepy figures. On to Dream Studio. I'm gonna have nightmares on this one. Definitely creepy, which is kind of what we're looking for, but it's not that cinematic, and one of them has random text on the bottom. Again, an instance of stealing something and not really transforming it, which is basically copying. Putting this aside, I feel this is the best stable diffusion example out of the three prompts. Now over to Midjourney, which completely blows the others out of the water. All four pieces nail the requirements in different styles. It's also incredibly detailed. That's three out of three for Midjourney, which is our clear winner here. It produced the most detailed and beautiful art that followed the prompts. I'd say Dolly comes in second, with great looking thumbnails, but less detailed art when you zoom in. Dream Studio and Stable Diffusion come in third on this. Again, this is a very unscientific test, and I'm willing to admit that I could be using Dream Studio wrong based on the results we're seeing. I absolutely do not want this to be a hater video on Stable Diffusion or Dolly. Each is remarkable and mind-blowing in what they're able to do, but just comparing them right now, Midjourney is definitely ahead of the game. Now, as much as I want to focus on the light side of things, we need to be real. These tools are trained on actual artwork created by actual artists, but there's no credit provided to them. In fact, it may be impossible to provide credit in any meaningful way, since it uses and blends so many different pieces and styles. This isn't great news for many artists. Also, I just heard about this lawsuit being filed against many of these AI companies representing a set of artists. It's a hard case to make, but 
I'm not surprised they're trying. In an important interview, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT and Dolly, was talking about the jobs that AI would take over. He said past predictions used to be that blue collar, or manual jobs like construction work and manufacturing, would be taken over first, followed by the white collar jobs like computer programming and many other office jobs. Then lastly, the creative jobs like artists and musicians. But what we're seeing now is the opposite order. It's looking like creative jobs will be impacted the most first, followed by white collar jobs, then followed by blue collar jobs. Why is this the case? Tools like ChatGPT and MidJourney are showing some serious advancements in creative and information spaces. But what about blue collar jobs? In a different interview, Sam explains that robotics is really hard. This can sound pretty scary for the future of work and society, but OpenAI is also looking into and experimenting with ways to address that as well. Stay tuned for another video for more on that. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more info about living with AI.